like to welcome everyone once again to Isle of Boston Church of Christ Worship Service. Glad to have you with us today, and you're more than welcome, and thank you all. Continue to pray for all the ones continually that's, that's sick, all the ones that's going in for tests, going in for surgeries. Just pray for all of those people at the will. SK1, continue to pray for all the ones that have lost loved ones. We just continue to pray for those families that's going through those trying times. We just continue to pray for one to another. Just pray that they, good Lord, will return them back to their normal health and strength, if it be thy will. Just continually pray for all of those. Had a wonderful Bible study this morning. Went into a little bit of uh, uh, suffering. The causes of suffering this morning. In today's lesson, church, we'll be entitled Suffering this morning. I've been reading throughout the Bible this morning. Around James chapter 1, 13 through 17 and throughout the scriptures today. Again, the title is called Suffering. So what is suffering, Brother Keith? Suffering, a result of alienation between God and people between God and people that's called by sin. Although the root cause, listen, for suffering is spiritual. The root cause for suffering is spiritual. People suffer, listen, church. People suffer physically and morally. But we must understand Christ paid the penalty for sins of the world by suffering and dying on the cross. Christ did that. Since it will not be until the next life that the effects of sin are totally removed. You must understand that. The next life, the effects of sin are totally removed. The Bible tells us that no sin will enter the kingdom of God. No sin. Christians, listen to me, church. Christians still suffer in this world. They still suffer, listen, in this world. But listen what it does. Suffering teaches Christians to rely on and trust God. That's what suffering does for Christians. Make you want to more and more, listen, rely on God. See, when Paul wrote, he felt, he said that we felt that we had received a death sentence. But that was to make us, listen, he said, but that was to make us what? To rely, not on ourselves, he said, but on God who what? Who raises the dead. That's who we need to rely on. That's who we need to rely on. He delivered, he said that. He delivered us from so deadly. 
of apparel. That on him we have set up, listen, our hope that he will deliver, listen, us again. That's our hope when we're suffering or when we're going through suffering. See, people who do not believe in Christ will suffer eternity or eternally. Church, did you hear me? People who do not believe in Christ will suffer eternally. Those who do not believe. Oh, ain't that something? Think about Job. Around Job chapter 10. Verses 1 and 2. This is what Job said. Job said that my soul is weary of my life. That's what he said. He said, my soul is weary, listen, of my life. He said, I will leave my complaints, he said, upon myself. He said, I will leave my complaint upon myself. And I will speak. And the bitterness of my soul is what Job said. And then he said, I will do what? I will say unto God, do not condemn me. This is what he's saying. Don't condemn me. How could he talk like that? Because he was suffering. That's what he could, that's why he could talk about it. He said, he told him, do not condemn me, he said. Make think about it. He went a little farther. He said that. He says, show me. Listen to what he said. He says, show me. Wherefore thou contested with me. Ain't that something? He says, show me. Why thou contested, he said, with me. See, Job, at this point, Job complains to God. He said, he said, I'm sick of this life. Oh, the word, that's what he was saying. That's what Job says. Job said, I'm sick of this life. And from deep despair, he said that I complain to you, Lord. He said, he said I complain, he said to you. He said, my God, listen to what he said. He said, my God, don't just condemn me. He said, don't just condemn me, he said. This is what he told him. Seemed like he got a little bold there within himself. He said, point out my sin. He said, a reason that I'm suffering. He said, I want you to point out my sin. What he said. Point it out. We understand that God wasn't the cause of Job's suffering. Ain't that something? Understand it was the devil. When he said, Show me. See, Job dared to speak to God as an equal. Y'all walk with me. Again, using legal language. Round chapter 9, verses 3. Job demands that God give him a fair trial through proper code protocol. Ain't that something? See, here Job, at this point, Job's come close to unjustified indignation at God's sovereign will for his life. Well, y'all listen to me. Sovereign will for his life. Matthew chapter 27, 45 and 46. 
we must understand, church. Christ paid the penalty for sins. He paid the penalty for sins. And it reads, now from the sixth hour, listen to me, church. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, according to the Bible. And about the ninth hour, listen to me, church, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Lama Sakabani, that's to say, my God, my God, why hast thou, he said, forsaken me? Why hast thou? Seeking me. Ain't that something? Again at noon, the sky turned dark and stayed that way until three o'clock. Give it to you a little simpler. Then about that time, Jesus shouted those words, Eli, Lemma Satchabat, which means, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Cause of the anguish, the pain, the agony that was going through. See, listen, when he talked about the physical darkness, was well, a demonstration of the agony of the Lord's human soul. Ain't that something? He said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If you look at it, it's a duplication of my God. My God indicates Jesus' deep sorrow. His deep sorrow. The fact that Jesus spoke Aramaic, tongue of his birth, may be another sign of extreme stress that he was encountering. No human, listen, church. No human can understand the theological significance of this cry. No human can understand the significance of the cry that Jesus done. Graphically Perel's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 21. This was not a cry. Listen, this was not a cry of defeat. And he was crying at this point. Wasn't a sign of defeat. However, Christ was quoting from Psalm chapter 22. And may have been alluding to the great victory that the psalm described. Church, we're going to suffer. We're going to go through things. But we must hold and stay strong. Stay in the faith. Romans chapter 8, verses 24. Listen what the Bible says. For we are saved by what? By hope, according to the Bible. It said we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen, listen, is not hope. Church, did you hear me? The hope that is seen, listen, is not hope. For what a man seeth. Why do it he yet hope for? See, if you can see it, why are you hoping for it? See, hope is something that you can't see. Oh, y'all got it. And this hope, listen, church, and this hope is what saves us. But if we already have what we hope for, there's no need to keep on what? To keep on hoping if you already got it. Talked about hope. Hope is a constant expectation of the unseen reality. See, we are saved. Listen, church. We are saved by faith. We are saved by faith. But our hope is in the return of Christ in all his glory. And our complete deliverance from our sinful nature. 
Ain't that something? Remember what he told us. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Ain't that something? That's what he's going to prepare a place. And he's coming back to get his. He's coming back to get his. Because he said so. Because he said so, church. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Paul is talking. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Listen what the Bible said. But we had, listen. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust, he said, in ourselves. But in God, which raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death. And doeth deliver to whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. We felt that we were going to die is well, actually what Paul said. He said, we felt that we was going to die. This made us stop trusting in ourselves to start trusting God. Stop trusting in ourselves and start trusting God who raises the dead to life. God saves us from the threats of death. And we made sure that he would do it again. He said, do it again and again. Oh, he does something. When Paul talked about the death, the sentence of death. Paul returns to the theme, listen church, of death and resurrection several times in this letter. Here Paul is probably referring to the life-threatening persecution he faced when he preached the gospel back in Acts chapter 14 verses 19 and 20. Ain't that something? That's what he was talking about. Church was still talking about suffering. Today, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5. Listen what the Bible said. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare, he said, unto you that God is light. This is what I said. God is what? God is light. And in him there is what? No darkness at all. No darkness. Because he is the light. Jesus told us that God is the light and does not have any darkness in him. And he said, now we are what? We are telling you. Ain't that something? And now he said, we are telling, we are telling you. See, when it said that God is light, listen, by nature, in his essential being, just that he is the spirit, John chapter 4, verses 24, and love, verse 4, chapter 4, verses 8, light refers to God's moral character. Church, did you hear me? See, light. Refers to God. What moral character? No darkness at all. See, God is holy. Untouchable by any evil or sin. Ain't that something? Because God is light. Those who desire fellowship with him must also listen. Be pure. Church, we're talking about suffering today. Moving right along, church. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 17. Listen what the Bible says. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. I don't want to go slow so y'all can understand this. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. See, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Did you hear me? God cannot be tempted 
with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Ain't but one tempter. Well, and that's the devil. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when his lust has, the Bible said, conceived. It bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, not the heir. My beloved brethren, he said, every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? It's from above. And coming down from the fall of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow, he said, of turning. Oh, that's what we're talking about today. Listen, don't blame other words. Listen, don't blame God when you are tempted. Don't blame him when you are tempted. God cannot be tempted by evil. And something else. And he does not use evil to tempt others. We say, the Lord is just testing me. The Lord is just tempting me. Quit lying on the Lord. We are tempted by our own desire. This is what we must understand. We are tempted by our own desire that drags us off and traps us. Our desires, listen, makes us sin. Desires. And when sin is finished with us, listen what it says. It leaves, the Bible says, it leaves us dead. Listen, don't be fooled, he said, my dear friends. Every good and perfect gift come down from the Father who created all lights in heaven. And is always the same and never make dark shadows by what? By changing. That's the God we serve. That's the Lord we serve. Still talking about suffering the day, church. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4. Listen what the Bible says. Bible said, whom the God of this world, listen, whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image, listen, of God, should shine, listen, the Bible say, unto them. Or the word to God, who rules this world, listen, has done what? Has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. They cannot see the light because they are blinded. Ain't that something? Which is the good news? They cannot see the light, which is the good news about our glorious Christ who showed what God is like. That's what we're talking about today, church. We're talking about suffering today. Listen. Unbelievers have a barrier to overcome. The God of this age, listen, has blinded their minds because of Satan deception. Sometimes what the world thinks is obvious truth is painfully wrong. Oh, ain't that something? Proverbs chapter 14, verses 12. Church, did you hear what I said? Sometimes the world thinks is obvious truth, but it's painfully wrong. Moving on a little farther, church. Still talking about suffering today. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 31 and 32. Listen what the Bible said. The Bible said, listen to me, cast from all of your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart, he says, and a new spirit. 
Why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, saith the Lord God, he said. Wherefore, turn yourselves and do what? And live ye. Brother Keith, what did he just say? Give up your evil ways is what he said. Simple put. Give up your evil ways and start thinking pure thoughts. And be faithful, he said to me. Do you really want to be put to death for your own sins? So what he told, asked him. He said, I, the Lord God, said, don't want to see that happen, he said to anyone. He said to stop. So stop sinning and what? And live. That's what he said. Stop sinning and live. See, listen, church. Everyone is judged equitably and individually. God never enjoys condemning a person. Church, are you listening to me? God never enjoys condemning a person. But listen, church, but he is just and righteous in dispensing his judgment. He's righteous. So he's going to give you just what you deserve. If you deserve it, you're going to get it, whether it's good or bad. Moving on down, church, towards the end. John chapter 16, verses 33. John 16, 33. Listen what the Bible says. The Bible says that these things he said, I've spoken unto you, he said. These things that I've spoken unto you. He said that in me, ye might have peace. He said in me, you might have peace. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. In this world, you're going to have, listen, tribulation. That's what it said. It didn't say you might have them. It didn't say you probably will have them. It didn't say maybe you will have them. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulations. He said, but be a good cheer. That's what he said. So be a good cheer. I have overcome, he said, the world. He said, Brother Keith, how can I be a good cheer with what I'm going through? Bible, Jesus said, be a good cheer. He's overcome it. He conquered it. Be a good cheer. I told you in Bible class. Song that we sing, this world is not our home. We just are passing through. Some think we're going to be here forever. It's just temporary. Ain't that something? He said, I have overcome, he said, the world. I have told you this so that you may have peace well in your hearts. Because, he said of me, while you are in this world, while, he said, you are in this world, you will have to suffer. Ain't that something? While in this world, you have to suffer. Have to suffer. But he said, but cheer up. I have defeated, oh, the world. Ain't that something? See, when he talked about tribulations at this point, it literally pressure, a figure till it means affliction or distress. He said, be of good cheer means be confident and courageous is what he said. What I said, be confident and courageous. When we place our trust, listen church, when we place our trust in God, he can give us peace if we put our trust in him. He would give us peace in the midst, listen, of pressure. Ain't that something? 
In the midst of pressure, he will give you peace. But we got to put our trust in him. Why pray to him if we don't trust him? He just said the prayers of the righteous that he heals them. He heals the, he heals the prayers of the righteous. Listening to me. See, when we place our trust in God, we or He gives us peace in the midst of pressure. I want that to sink in. Philippians chapter 1, 27 through 30. For Paul's explanation of this principle of joy and suffering. That's what we're talking about today, church. We're talking about suffering. We're gonna suffer. We will suffer. We will suffer. Down toward the end, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. And again, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Listen what the Bible says. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He was in all points tempted, according to the Bible. In all points, he said, he was tempted like we are. The Bible said, yet without sin. Ain't that something? Yet, the Bible said, without sin. That's what we're talking about, church. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne. Boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. That's what we're talking about. Jesus without sin. Oh, ain't that something? Jesus understands every weakness of ours. Because he was tempted, listen, in every way that we are tempted. But that's the reason, church, he can make an example. Because he was tempted in all ways that we are tempted. But he did not sin. Ain't that something? So whenever we are in need, listen. We should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God. That will be treated. That we will be treated with understanding kindness. And we will find help. Oh, ain't that something? We talked about come. It's the same Greek word translated, listen, draw near. I think that's something. Draw near. In chapter 10, verses 22. The command strongly contrasts with God's command, listen, at Mount Sinai. He said, told him, said, do not go up to the mountains or touch the base. Exodus chapter 19, verses 12. See, because of Christ's priestly or priestly work. Believers can approach God's presence. The writer of Hebrews is expressing the openness, the openness of God's call, listen, in Christ. He said, come. Revelation 22, 17. When he talked about boldness, or boldly, it's the same word that is rendered confidence. Chapter 3, verses 6, and chapter 10, verses 19. And mean plainness of speech, fearlessness, and courage. Church, did you hear me? Fearlessness and courage. But listen, this church. Believe us to courageously approach God in prayer because He is. A throne of grace. Ain't that something? 
And our high priest, listen, sits at his right hand. Intercede, listen. Intercede for us. Hear what I said. Our high priest sits at the right hand. Intercede, listen, for us, meaning you and I. Boy, ain't that something? That's what we talked about today, church. We talked about suffering today. We will go through things in this life being a Christian. Ain't that something? You must not give up. The more you go through, the more you call on Jesus. The tougher it gets, the more you call on the Lord. The tougher things get. But don't turn away from the Lord. See, the time you think you'll be turned away, you need to be turning to it and ask him for comfort. Ask him for help. Ain't that something? Church, that concludes our sermon and service today, which the sermon is entitled Suffering. And I hope again I've said something to help each and every one of us Continue to go closer, closer to thee. And I hope today that you can better understand suffering. Hope you can better understand suffering. For the ones that like to become a Christian, there are five things you must do to become a Christian. First, you must hear the word, Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Romans 10, 14. Next, you must believe. Believe what you have heard. Hebrews 11, 6. Bible said, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is the reward of them that what? Diligently seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Next, you must repent. Repent means to change. Have another mind and respect to sin. Acts chapter 17, verses 30. And at the time of this ignorance, God winked at it. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. I tell you before, church, he's not overlooking it. He's not winking anymore. You must repent and we must change. Next, you must confess. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts chapter 8. Verses 36 and 37. And it'll bring you down to Philip and the eunuch. And as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, listen, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Oh, ain't that something? Next, you must be baptized. Down into the water, all who believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verses 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Ain't that something? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Someone may ask, Brother Keith, how do you contact the blood? I said the only way to contact the blood is going down into the water. The only way to contact the blood. 
And there's no way around baptism. You must be baptized. And again, church, that concludes our study for this morning. And we'd like to thank everyone. Everyone. Again, just, just thank them. And let us go into a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear me, Father, thank you for allowing us to have this sermon this morning. Father, hope and pray that was something said that will bring each and every one of us closer, closer to thee. Father, we pray for all the ones continually that's sick, not feeling well. We pray for all of those people. We pray for all the ones that's going in for tests, going in for surgery. Father, we just continually pray for all of those people. We pray to, the, pray to your Father that you will help the doctors find the thing, find the cure that will help them to be returned to their normal health and strength, if it be thy will. Father, we continue to pray for all the churches throughout this land and country. Father, we pray that all of them teach and preach the same thing so we're not being a division in your church. Father, we continue to pray for this church. We pray for each and every one of them that continue to be safe and they continue to be healthy and they continue to, to just continue to be loved and cared people that you know that they should be. Father, we ask you to continue to show the, let the members here show the love towards one to another. Father, not only this church, we ask you to keep your hand above all the churches throughout this land and country, keeping all of them safe, and let them show the love and concern towards one to another. Father, we continue to pray for Everyone that's traveling up and down these dangerous highways, Father, we ask you to keep your hand above them. And let them make it to their destination safe and sound, wherever it may be. Father, we ask you to just to keep them safe. Father, we ask you to continue to guide us and lead us in a way that you know that we should go. Father, we ask you, we just want to say thank you for being the father that you are to your children. These mother blessing Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.